energy. Uh, I would like to introduce myself. My name is uh, François Maréchal. I'm professor here in EPFL in mechanical engineering. By training, I'm a chemical engineer. I did uh, my studies in Belgium uh, and moved in uh, EPFL um, in 2001. I am um, having a, I'm leading a group, a research group that is located in Sion, so the campus Energy Police in Valais, uh, where uh, we are doing research on um, developing methods for engineers to design new processes or design new energy systems. And so this uh, course is going to talk about the energy conversion, and I would like, before introducing what it means, uh, I would like first to tell you that the courses will be recorded, that's why there is these people here plus the camera there, so that uh, next uh, week you will see what I have said this week, so it would be uh, a nice way for you to uh, follow the course. Uh, in addition to this, I would like to introduce uh, Stefano Moret, who is a postdoc in my group and who is going to uh, be in charge with me of this course. And then in the course, there will be also some uh, other people that will then give lectures, the Professor uh, Sophia Hausinger and uh, Professor Jan Van Ellen, who is going, who are going to give you some specialized or develop some specialized topics. Uh, in addition to this, you will have uh, exercise and uh, therefore there will be teaching assistants. Uh, so we will, I will be still there and uh, Stefano as well, but uh, um, Xiang Li, who is here, will be teaching assistants. So you can perhaps just uh, no, stand up so that, so that the people see your face. <laughs> Um, so he's a PhD student in my group. So and uh, uh, Louise uh, is not here today, but she will be there starting from next week, um, also to help you for uh, the uh, exercise. Okay. So um, what is energy, and why do we speak about energy conversion and renewable energy? Indeed, human needs energy. Everyone needs energy to just move your body and to make your brain operate. Right? And the amount that we need for uh, making your, it's your personal energy needs is the equivalent of 25 centiliters of gasoline per day. So this is the amount that you have to eat every day if you want to be sure that your body will operate. Okay? And this is true for everyone in the world, so not only for the Swiss people. Okay? Uh, now, translated into Swiss uh, money, uh, I just took the, uh, the value from uh, how much the Swiss people are spending to buy food. Okay? And I divide it by the number of persons, and I obtain uh, a value of nine Swiss francs per day and per capita, which is the amount of money that the Swiss people spend in order to uh, uh, have the food that they need to operate their body. In addition to having our, oops. <laughs> there is an error in there. <laughs> in addition to, to, to the fact that the people need uh, um, energy to, to live, they need also energy to, uh, to move, to have the mobility, to be comfortable in, um, in the houses, and to produce. And the amount that is consumed is five the equivalent of five liters of uh, five point five liters of gasoline per day and per capita. So this is the amount of energy that the Swiss people spend every day to satisfy all their needs. And you can see that there is a factor twenty between uh, the two entities. So we need twenty five more energy 
to be comfortable to move and to produce than the amount that we need to live. Okay, and translated into into uh, uh, Swiss francs, and there I have used the statistics of uh, uh, Switzerland, where we can see the amount of money that we spend every year in order to buy the energy resources that we need, and you you pay 8.5 Swiss francs per day and per capita to have all this uh, research uh, the, the energy needs that you. You have, okay, and so normally I should have this uh, operation first because the problem is that most of this amount is burned. Okay, do we really have a problem of energy? The answer is for sure not. There is no problem of energy because we receive from the sun enough to satisfy all our needs. In one and a half hour we receive from the sun, so the Earth in general receive from the sun uh, in 1.5 hours, the whole amount of energy that it needs for the whole year without improving the efficiency, without being uh, really efficient. So we look at the amount that we need to consume today and it's the equivalent of 1.5 hours of solar irradiation. Translated, it means also that in uh, in one year, we receive enough to leave 6,500 years. So the problem is probably not there with energy. So what is the problem of energy? The problem of energy is the sun. Because the sun is intermittent and is seasonal and does not shine everywhere in the same way. Okay? Um, and what did the nature do with this problem. So the, the nature has invented a very nice chemical process which is a biochemical process which is named the photosynthesis which is taking gases and uh, solid that it finds in the atmosphere and the biosphere. So the gases are carbon dioxide and, the, and then water in form of liquids uses some catalysts, which are, which are the nutrients that, they, that we can find in the soil. And with those three components, it is able to capture the, uh, the amount of uh, energy coming from the sun, the solar irradiation. And this is what the, the plants do, and they create biomass. So biomass is a stored energy that has been captu captured from the energy of the sun. Okay, something which is interesting there is that it's a stored energy that the human, and when, when I'm saying human, it's not only us, it's all the living animals here, uh, will consume in form of energy in order to supply the needs of their energy. So that's the food that will uh, supply us with the energy. And we are going to release the carbon dioxide, the water, and we, for doing this, we need to do what is named a combustion or an oxidation, and we will use the oxygen from the air, so the fact that you breathe is for supplying the oxygen to the oxidation process in such a way that you will have the energy that you need to move and to uh, uh, love your uh, neighbors. Okay, so this is a very nice um, uh, uh, cycle. Something which is also interesting is that, so from a very diffused energy that we have in the sun, uh, we have something which is stored now because we have the equivalent, more or less, of 20 megajoules per kilogram of biomass that is stored and that, can, that we can use at the time where we need. Okay? So in reality, the, the, the nature was even more uh, efficient because you use the food and then you store the food. So you have a fat that is used in order to store uh, and to deface the time where you need the, the energy from the time where you consume the food. Okay. In the amount of this energy that was captured in form of biomass, the, the, the Earth has taken a very small amount. To, it's, it's the equivalent of 10% of one year of irradiation, okay, and has stored it into the underground. Okay. And by storing into the underground, we increase the pressure, we increase the temperature, and we push the oxygen out. And we then concentrate, in addition, or the, the, the Earth has concentrated the 
uh, energy content <coughs> to form the, the, the oil that is stored on the ground. And this operation did happen 100 million years ago. Okay? So 100 million years ago, the Earth has stored a part of the biomass and produced the coal. And men discovered this uh, uh, resource. So the, the main attractivity of uh, the oil that is stored is the density, 40 to 50 megajoules per kilogram. Okay? So very dense and easy to process energy that is av made available. And the man discovered it, it has extracted the oil, transported the oil, transformed the oil into different products, stored, distributed, to end up in the buildings, in the cars, or in the industry, to satisfy all our needs. And there we have used the oxygen that, we, that is abundant compared to, to the uh, com compared to the amount that we need uh, in the atmosphere in order to produce the energy by combustion and release the carbon dioxide. The problem that you will see is that there is a difference between the black carbon dioxide that is here and the red that is here because this one has an age of 100 million years. So it was the carbon that was in the atmosphere 100 million years ago that we release, okay? What is important is that energy is everywhere. It satisfies all our needs. So uh, for the living comforts, you need light, you need heat, you need so, uh, and cooling. Uh, of course, you need to eat. Uh, and it's also going to, to, it's needed to all what is related to your health, okay? Um, the energy is also used to uh, make goods and products uh, in two different types. On the one hand, it, it satisfies, it supplies the energy that is needed for the production, and in addition, it is supplying the raw material. So all the petrochemicals that you can see everywhere, so everywhere where you have a small amount of plastics or a paint or even uh, uh, medicines are, or drugs are coming from the uh, resource which is coming from the oil, which is at the same time then a source of carbon and a source of energy. Uh, energy provides mobility also in different ways, from the cars to uh, the airplanes and the ships. And energy is also there to provide us with something which is getting more and more value, which is the, uh, the data. It provides you access to internet. It allows banks to share uh, money. And it allows also uh, the financial uh, markets to operate. So energy, energy is everywhere. And one could say that energy is really the driving force of our society. Right? So what are the physical units of energy? It's interesting to look at, uh, the, to, to realize that there are different types of energy. You know most probably from uh, the physics that there is a kinetic energy, right? Which is the mass multiplied by the square of speed. And if we transform this into uh, units, then you will see that the energy is in fact a force times a displacement, um, which is expressed in joule. So the joule is the official uh, um, unit of measure of the energy. Uh, so you can see that there is an energy in the speed, there is uh, an energy in the displacement, there is also uh, a potential energy that is, for example, the, that is the energy that will be or that can be produced by something which is stored at a given position, okay? altitude, for example. In addition to uh, the joule, which measures the energy, there is also the rate at which we use the energy, which is the watt. So the rate, which is the power, the rate of the use of energy is the power and is expressed in watt. There, is, there exist different types of energy. So you have um, the work that is due to the pressure. There is also 
the heat that is a disordered type of energy that is measuring the agitations of molecules in a, uh, due to the, uh, to the temperature. You have the electricity, so the electrical energy that is a charge times a, uh, a voltage uh, potential. The chemical energy that is the amount of energy that is stored into uh, a molecule and the nuclear energy that is the energy that is stored inside the atoms. Okay? And then there is a quantity energy that is related to the, to the, radiation, of, uh, or the, the radiation of the light and the relative energy that is the one invented by or discovered by Einstein, which is the mass multiplied by a speed to the square. Okay, so we are consistent in terms of energy. So it's interesting to have now order of magnitudes about uh, the energy. So how much energy do we need every day? So the 0.25 liter of gasoline corresponds to six megajoules of energy. One liter of oil is 36 megajoules and 100 kilometer with a, a golf that consumes six liters. Uh, 100 kilometer is 230 uh, megajoules. And then it's also interesting to see the rate at which we use the energy. So for example, the power which is related to a computer, 200 watts. And I'm looking for the IT people that will say, no, today it's less, and you're right. Uh, but this is for, for a desktop. Huh? Uh, with a lot of cores. Um, a professional cyclist is going to, to deliver 450 watts. So it means that if you have a professional cyclist who is pedaling and is transforming its energy into electricity, it will be able to run two desktop computers. Right? Um, a typical adult is, is uh, 100 watts. And 100 watts means that in the room here we are Officially, we are one, 120 uh, <coughs> registered students, so it would mean that we are, uh, you are radiating 12 kilowatt of heat in this room, uh, which then creates the difficulty for the engineers that have to make an air conditioning project to, in, in this room because they have to account for the fact that you are going to deliver in form of gains heat to the room. Okay, compared. Um, so the 100 uh, students, 15 kilowatts, so we are far from the power of an engine, huh? small engine, right? So which is also showing the, uh, the, the difficulty of the storage. So uh, I have another example to show what is the importance. So, so how much is the value of uh, one uh, liter of oil? It's equivalent to go from the uh, uh, from the uh, Hermi Hut to Matterhorn, okay, 36 times for an Alpine guy who has a weight of 80 kilograms, okay. So just imagine that you have to do it once, okay. I did not, but it's 36 times, right? So energy is, uh, I would say, everywhere and in different types of units. The problem is that we have been uh, not only working with the international uh, standards in, when measuring the units, but also with uh, the history. So we have the British thermal units, for example, to measure the energy. Or we have the ton equivalent petrol, petroleum, of oil equivalent, sorry. Which is, which is another dimension. And here you have the conversion. Uh, something, which is, oh, sorry, something which is also very important is the fact that um, the energy is going to appear in different scales. Okay? The scale of the world or the scale of the computer or the scale of the atoms. Okay? Energy is everywhere, which means that we will have also to play with uh, uh, different sizes here, so from deca to iota, 10 to the power 24. Okay? 
uh, energy scales will appear in different, uh, as I said, different dimensions. For example, the exajoule will, will be at the level of the Earth, so the Earth consumes around 500 exajoule. Uh, you will have the industrial scales, and typically at the level of the industrial scale, we will, uh, we will see something which is going to appear, which is disturbing a lot of the students. Okay, it's the kilowatt hour, which is a measure of energy, okay, which is the energy that corresponds to one kilowatt for <coughs> one hour. So multiplied by one hour. Okay? And it's, imp it's important of not uh, making uh, the confusion between the two. So the kilowatt hour is an energy, the kilowatt is a power, right? Um, and then if we go down, then so you have also this, the, the, the energy value of, of uh, the oil. Huh? Um, and then if we go down, then we will go back to the human scale. And typically it was the level of the, of the calorie. Okay? And the calorie was uh, the amount of energy that was needed to increase the temperature of one degree C of one gram of water. Okay? Because the water was uh, a good reference for the people playing with uh, energy. And then if we go down still, we will go to the micros microscopic scale, and then we will speak about electrons, and therefore we will define the, uh, another scale of uh, energy unit, which is the electron volt, which is at the level of the one electron. Okay? So it's very small, because we have a lot of uh, moles of atoms in one gram, there is the number, the you know, uh, Avogadro number, which explains the fact that there is a very small amount here. But it is needed by the people who develop materials because they need to know what is the uh, energy that is involved in the exchange of electrons, for example. Another interesting dimension is the energy density. So the energy density um, can also be quite different. So, for example, we, we always say that it's very nice to have very good dams to produce electricity. Okay? But look at the density. So 0 0.001 megajoule per kilogram. Okay? So it means that you need huge volumes. And this is why we have to, put, uh, to, to propose very big dams, or build very big dams, in order to have the energy that is stored. Compared to this, the chocolate is quite good, huh? So 25 megajoules per kilogram, so it's, it's the, the energy of the biomass. And then, but look at the, the other options. So you can also go to coal and then to gasoline, so 50 megajoules per kilogram. And then if we go to uh, the nuclear part, so inside molecules, uh, inside atoms, then you can see that fission, fusion, and then the uh, uh, the relative uh, the energy from the relativity, which is exploding the energy density. Okay, energy density is something, and uh, energy prices is something else. I should have not shown this, and I should have asked you how much did you pay for the electricity at home? So who is from Lausanne? Or who is living in Lausanne? Okay, so you are all living in Lausanne, meaning that you are, uh, you are paying the electricity bill. So how much do you pay for the electricity in Lausanne? Nobody knows. <laughs> so you pay a bill and you do not know what is the value of what you pay for. So nobody has an idea. 20 cents. 20 cents. Are you sure that you're living? Huh? Per hour. 20 cents per kilowatt hour. Do you still, you are really living in Lausanne? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Since one week ago. Okay, then, then so you're pardoned. Uh, who is living in, who is coming from France? So how much do you pay in France? Okay, who is coming from Valais? Huh? How much do you pay in Valais? How much do you pay in Valais from... 
Okay, so the answer is it, it should be around 24 or 25 cents a kilowatt hour uh, if you are living in Lausanne, 17 if you are li li living in Valais, even less, 12 if I will remember, if you are living in France. Uh, so this is the value of uh, a kilowatt hour, which is an amount of energy in form of electricity. And then I have a very tricky question. What is the value of the energy of one liter of gasoline? How much do you pay in terms of kilowatt hour gasoline? So who is driving the car? <coughs> So you are not using your cars a lot because now it's 1.7. <laughs> yeah, okay. But it's per liter. Uh, and how, how much does it make per kilowatt hour? Because I need to compare the electricity and the and the uh, the gasoline. Uh, do, you do not have to make the calculation, so I tell you. It's uh, so 10 kilowatt hour for one liter. Okay, that's a trick. So 10 kilowatt hour for one liter, meaning that when you are um, paying 1.7 per liter, it means 17 cents per kilowatt hour. So the gasoline is cheaper than the electricity in Switzerland, not necessarily in France because they have another electrical mix. Okay, so and there is also some differentiation between the uh, different uh, uh, users. So a household is going to pay more than uh, uh, than the industry, um, and the, the heating oil is also. I, give, I, I take the value here now, okay, uh, but perhaps that tomorrow, if there is something which is happening in the world, the cost is going to change. Okay, but for the moment it should be around eight cents a kilowatt hour. Natural gas is a little bit more expensive. Okay, now I'm speaking about energy that is a driving force of our, of our society, and it's a very global issue. Okay, and the fact that it is a global issue, we can see here. Um, this is the amount of energy, uh, the, the value of the energy in the world. So. Uh, 15 to 20,000 uh, 20, billions dollars spent every year for the energy. Okay, so this is a very big number. It corresponds to, uh, oh, sorry, it, it was something from uh, French here, it's GDP here, so it corresponds to 20% of the whole world uh, uh, GDP. Okay, uh, there is a, an interesting uh, things that can, there are some interesting things that can be done when, when you look at the energy. Uh, there is a, a software which is named Gapminder that allows you to have an idea of what is the importance of energy. And here in this graph you have uh, the, the income in so the G GDP per capita. Okay? Uh, for different countries, the size of the different uh, uh, elements here are uh, the, uh, the population size. Okay, so what we can see here, and, and on the other hand, here you have the energy use, so per capita as well, right? So what you can see is that there are countries like Kuwait, for example, that are consuming a lot, but they have a very big income, and there are countries like in, in Africa where they have a very low income and a very low uh, consumption. And then you can see that the big players here are in the middle. They are uh, spending, uh, they are very important and not spending a lot of en energy today, uh, but with the evolution, most of it, they will grow. Uh, on the other hand, you can see that for the same amount of income, uh, you have uh, countries that need a lot of energy, like the US, for example, and then other countries like Switzerland, for example, that has more or less a, that has even bigger income than the US per capita, and that are consuming much less. Okay, so this is related to the efficiency of uh, the 
uh, of, of or the energy intensity of the different countries. So this is important to to, to realize because of course the problem is uh, might be here if all those people start to uh, become richer. Uh, the trick is that they will grow like this. And this can be seen here. In fact, I have just plotted uh, the evolution. So China. China was here, is here now. And they have increased their revenue. So people will say, OK, but it means that uh, if we want to grow, if we want to increase our GDP, we have to spend more energy. OK? But the reality is not true. But look at what is happening in Switzerland. So we started here, so more or less at the level of, of China today. Uh, we need, we, we did spend more energy, most probably because it was quite cheap, so we did spend more energy to increase our revenue, but after a certain time, we go, we, we went in the, di in, in the different direction. So we increase our GDP by reducing our energy consumption, which is a good news in, in reality. Okay, and then some people could say, yeah, that's because the Swiss people are smart, but you can see that even the US <laughs> has done the same. Okay, so it means that they are still consuming a lot, but they do not need to increase their, their consumption to increase their, uh, uh, their uh, revenue. Okay, so. I just give you the, the link here, so if you want to play with this, there are a lot of uh, use, nice information to realize what is happening in the, uh, with, with the, the evolution of the energy consumption. Uh, another dimension that could also be interesting is, is not just to look at the energy and not just look at the income, but perhaps look at the impact that we have uh, by consuming the energy, how, how much we deplete from the resources uh, in, um, that, that we have, and how much we, uh, uh, how happy we are. So, and it's not the, the happiness index, but it's a human development index that not only includes the GDP, but also how the people live, the health care, etc. And you can see that uh, there is a problem, is that if we compare uh, so, if we increase our uh, human development, and it is supposed to be here uh, the threshold of being in a good position, um, the problem is that we still uh, consume more and more in our uh, resource, which is in fact the amount of square meters that are necessary to regenerate the amount of energy that we consume in the world. Okay, so something which is important here is that um, we ideally all those countries here should be here. Okay, and there is in this picture no one depends where you you. There, there is one which is not far. So there are two ones that are not far from reaching the sustainability, and one is Cuba which is quite surprising, but that's because they, they have to pay a lot for the energy, so they do not consume a lot of energy, and they have a well-organized uh, uh, health and education system. Okay, so, and you can see again, Switzerland is much better than the US, but still not uh, sustainable. Uh, facing the problem of uh, being fair with the rest of the world, uh, Switzerland has invented so it was a concept invented by Switzerland, which is the 2000 Watt Society. Did you hear already about the 2000 Watt Society? Yes? No? Yeah, some of you. So the 2000 Watt Society is uh, saying that uh, a society would be allowed to, to spend, to consume the equivalent of 2000 Watt year. So it means a, a constant value of 2000, constant power of 2000 watt over the year. So it's the energy consumption is the watt year per year and per inhabitant. Okay. And uh, it was the energy consumption of the world in the year 2000. So the mean energy consumption of the world in the year 2000 with some countries that were consuming much less, including the big one. Huh? And then 
some countries they were very bad. So uh, something which is interesting when you look at the 2001 concept, then you can see that the US is quite bad in uh, the energy uh, intensity of the country. And in addition to this, now we have also to add another dimension, which is the amount that is uh, on this 2000 watt. Uh, there has to be a share of renewable energy. That is today supposed to be 75%, but if I will show you later on that it is, it has to be even more strict. And the green part here is in fact sh showing where uh, so the part that is corresponding to the, uh, the green part is the amount of the renewable energy that is in the energy mix of the different countries. Okay, so 2000 watt means 2000 watt year per year and per inhabitant. Okay, uh, and uh, ideally we have also to reach a, a, a very low carbon dioxide emissions. So energy has also not only an impact on, on the development of the society, but has also ge geopolitical aspects. So the, as the energy is the engine of the society, it is related to political goals. So the, the politicians have the duty of being sure that we will have access to energy. So they build infrastructure to give the access to energy. And they also make work to guarantee that we will have access to energy. Okay, it was already the case in the Second World War uh, that become a world war because Germany did not have enough resources locally. Uh, in Iraq, in Syria, so we have seen that the uh, um, the Daesh war was financed by uh, the the oil, the resource that was found there. There has been also a lot of tensions between Ukraine and Russia. Uh, North Korea, Iran is discussing about nuclear, and it's not only nuclear weapons, but it's also the access of nuclear energy, and they say that it is related. Venezuela, for the moment, is, is very bad, in very bad position, and especially because they have based their own, uh, the, the whole uh, country on the cost of oil, and the oil is, the cost has dropped, and so they do not have enough uh, revenue. The same is for Russia, and uh, we know also that uh, the U.S. is uh, always afraid of not having enough oil, so they do not want to export, but they will export, and then as soon as they export, then the price is dropping, and so all the people are losing the money. Uh, and just to show you why it is so important worldwide, look at this. Those are the flows of oil around uh, exchange between countries. So it's a very global problem, okay? And the, the global problem is not only the fact that uh, there are exchanges, but there are also risks, like for example, the Fukushima uh, accident. And if you look at the Fukushima accident and you look at where the, uh, the dust of the explosion went, okay, after uh, six days, uh, they were in Canada and, and in uh, California. Okay, so it's a very big, very, very big problem in this case. So very big impact, right? Um, if you do not burn oil or coal in the right way, then you will have another problems. If you want to uh, preserve the health of the people, then you have to take care about uh, the air quality as well. So this is an example uh, in China, uh, where some people in big cities in China have never seen a blue sky. Yeah? Okay, because of all the particles that are there. Um, and another dimension is, is just showing the impact of the shell gas. So this is an aerial uh, photograph of uh, the Marcellus field, which is a shell gas field in the US. They have plenty of space, so they don't care, okay? Um, just to tell you that this is something that, uh, so if we look at the resource in, in France, for example, they are below Paris, okay? So it means that we should have, we, if we want to exploit those resources, we should be something like, uh, develop something like this. Each small hole here is uh, um, 
a well, and the well is going to last seven years, and after seven years, you have to close down and you have to go to the next one. Okay? And then sometimes when you drill, you have the problem that uh, if you do not do it in a smart way, then the gas that you expect to extract is going to be lost in the aquifers. And there will be someone who is going to pump out of the aquifer, and then when we open the, the, the tap water, he will also be able to light the tap water, right? That's, uh, but this is not a joke, it did happen, okay? And also, you can see here, so this is just the waste management needed in order to extract the gas. So, so you look at the size compared to a car, and this is for one well. So it means that you have to, to duplicate it everywhere. And the consequence is that the, uh, the, the people in, uh, uh, so the politicians have decided to change uh, the course to some extent, take a responsibility for the future uh, generations, and have decided to do what we name the energy transition. The energy transition is coming, has been initiated, let's say, by the Fu Fukushima accident, because a lot of countries realized that if they would have the same so improbable accident that would appear near their population, they would have big, very big trouble. So if uh, nuclear power plants, the, the nuclear power plants that is just near Bern is going to explode, so there will be a lot of uh, cities, including the capital, that would have to be completely evacuated and then cleaned afterwards. Okay? So they realized that it was not the way to go, so they have decided to uh, go into the energy transition. And at the same time, now we have been talking about climate change, and the climate change has also had a very big impact uh, that Let's do the, the signature of the COP21 ag agreement where uh, the people have decided to uh, try to phase out the use of fossil fuel at the horizon of 2070. So those two elements are putting a challenge on you. You will be engineers and therefore you will be responsible for this energy transition. All of you will be concerned uh, because some of you will, pro will make materials, others will make devices, uh, others will work with the, uh, in the energy sector, and all of you will be concerned with the efficiency of the energy use and the efficiency of the energy consumption. Okay, so I'm going to stop here, uh, make a, sh a short break, and then in 15 minutes, I'm going to uh, look at the impact of the energy system. Okay, one, one of the difficulty of uh, the energy is that it is needed by everyone. And instead of preparing a lot of slides, I would like to show you just a small video, which is uh, made by, it's part of a TEDx talk of uh, Hans Rösling, who was a physicist from uh, Sweden, uh, who is uh, explaining the problematic of the energy of the world. Okay, so let us uh, just listen to him. It's uh, two minutes. You don't know. What is special with it? I had to do an analysis about the energy used in the world. Here we are. Look here. Do you see the seven million people up there? The air people, the wash people, the bulb people, and the fire people. Uh, one unit like this is. Uh, energy unit of fossil fuel, oil, coal, or gas. That's what most of the electricity and the energy in the world is. Huh? And, and it's 12 units used in the entire world. And the richest 1 billion, they use six of them. Half of the energy is used by one-seventh of the world population. And these ones who have washing machine, but not the house full of other machines, they use two. And this group use three, one each. Uh, and they just have electricity, and over there they don't even use one each. That makes 12 of them. But the main concern for the environmentally interested students, and they are right, is about the future. What are the trends? If we just prolong the trends without any really advanced analysis to 2050, there are two things that can increase the energy use. First, population growth. Second, economic growth. 
Population growth will mainly occur among the poorest people here because they have high child mortality and they have many children per woman. And that you will get two extra, but that won't change the energy use very much. What will happen is, is economic growth, the best off here in the emerging economies. I call them the New East. They will jump the airline, whoop, they will say, and they will start to use as much as the Old West are doing already. And these people, they want the washing machine. I told you, they'll go there, and they will double their energy use, and we hope that the poor people will get into the electric light, and they will get two-child family, we'll have a stop in population growth, but the total energy consumption will increase to 22 units. And these 22 units, you know, still, the richest people use most of them. So what's needed to be done? Because the risk, the high probability of climate change is real. It's real. Huh? Of course, they must be more energy efficient. They must change behavior to some way. They must also start to produce green energy, much more green energy. But until they have the same energy consumption per person, they shouldn't give advice to others what to do and what to not to do. Here we, can get, here we can get more green energy all over. This is what we hope may happen. It's a real challenge in the future. Huh? But I can assure you that this woman in the favela in Rio, she wants a washing machine. She's very... Okay, it was just a part. So if you are interested, you can go on YouTube and look at the magic wo uh, washing machine from Hans Rosling. Uh, he's just explaining that we will have a responsibility and the responsibility is, has been nicely explained is that us and you as engineers will have to improve the efficiency we have to in integrate renewable energy resources if we want at least to be fair with the rest of the world okay and of course the rest of the world will irritate from our knowledge and will also then go into a better world. So this is the um, uh, a part of the of the picture of the energy which is related to uh, the population. Now something which has been also shown. Oops. That has also been introduced is climate change. So climate change is, is related to the fact that uh, when we use oil, the result is carbon dioxide emissions. And I have shown you that this carbon dioxide emission is coming from the carbon that is stored underground. So it's, it, in reality, it can be considered as a waste. And so I would like just to show you some numbers. And the first number that I would like to show you is uh, when we leave, we are also producing waste. Okay, and the amount of waste that each one in Switzerland is producing is 700 kilogram per year, which means two kilograms per day and per person. Okay, half of it is in fact treated, so recycled, etc. But and half of it is burnt. Okay, and we are ready to pay for the waste management <coughs> an order of magnitude of three. Swiss francs per day and per capita. So it doesn't mean that you are spending three Swiss francs each day, so one cup of coffee each day to uh, uh, treat your waste, but this is a mean value that I have uh, calculated. Okay, so three Swiss francs per day, so compared to the nine that we spend to buy food, okay, and the nine that we spend to buy the oil. Okay, and then we emit carbon dioxide, and then you will see the big impact of carbon dioxide. So the amount of carbon dioxide that we emit every day, each one in Switzerland, is 14 kilograms. So factor seven compared to the waste that we produce every day. Okay, 14 kilograms. And if we, if I'm looking at the, the, the value of the market today, 25 dollar a ton of carbon dioxide emitted. Uh, the amount that we would have to pay if we were paying a CO2 tax would be three cents per day. Okay, the sugar that you add in your coffee, okay, that nobody asks you to pay, right? But this is the value. Okay, CO2 emissions. 
CO2 emissions have a very big uh, impact. And I would like to show you two different um, um, videos. The first, uh, another video, sorry. Uh, and this video is um, is showing the story. Uh, okay, I have to see where my mouse is. Okay. Now it's of one year of. I'm a climate scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. What you're looking at is a supercomputer model of carbon dioxide levels in the Earth's atmosphere. The visualization compresses one year of data into a few minutes. Carbon dioxide is the most important greenhouse gas affected by human activity. About half of the carbon dioxide emitted from fossil fuel combustion remains in the atmosphere, while the other half is absorbed by natural land and ocean reservoirs. In the northern hemisphere, we see the highest concentrations are focused around major emission sources over North America, Europe and Asia. Notice how the gas doesn't stay in one place. The dispersion of carbon dioxide is controlled by the large-scale weather patterns within the global circulation. During spring and summer in the northern hemisphere, plants absorb a substantial amount of carbon dioxide through photosynthesis, thus removing some of the gas from the atmosphere. We see this change in the model of one year of... I'm a climate scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. What you're looking at is a supercomputer model of carbon dioxide levels in the Earth's atmosphere. The visualization compresses one year of data into a few minutes. Carbon dioxide is the most important greenhouse gas affected by human activity. About half of the carbon dioxide emitted from fossil fuel combustion remains in the atmosphere, while the other half is absorbed by natural land and ocean reservoirs. In the northern hemisphere, we see the highest concentrations are focused around major emission sources over North America, Europe, and Asia. Notice how the gas doesn't stay in one place. The dispersion of carbon dioxide is controlled by the large-scale weather patterns within the global circulation. Although this change is expected, we're seeing higher concentrations of carbon dioxide accumulate in the atmosphere each year. This is contributing to the long-term trend of rising global temperatures. The Orbiting Carbon Observatory 2, or OCO2, will be the first NASA satellite mission to provide a global view of carbon dioxide. OCO2 observations and atmospheric models like GEOS-5 will work closely together to better understand both human emissions and natural fluxes of carbon dioxide. This will help guide climate models toward more reliable predictions of future conditions across the globe. Okay, so it shows that carbon dioxide is uh, not a simple gas that is released, but you can see that it's a novel problem, okay? And that it is included into complex cycles. So you have seen that photosynthesis is capturing carbon dioxide, fires are, pro pro uh, are releasing carbon dioxide, seasons have an effect of uh, emitting carbon dioxide and then reducing later on the carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere. So it's, it's a, a, a real <coughs> and big problem. Something which is important is, is the fact that the, uh, each country is emitting carbon dioxide, okay? And according to which energy mix that they have, they can be really different. So you can see, for example, that there is a factor, there was a factor two in energy, but there is a factor three in terms of carbon dioxide between Switzerland and, um, 
and uh, in the US. And this is mainly because we're using, in form of electricity, we're producing electricity using uh, hydropower. Something which is important is that uh, the people emit more and more carbon dioxide. So each country is emitting carbon dioxide. And all those, cam the, all those gases, in addition to, to uh, the, the CO2, there is also the methane and the noise <coughs> that are also contributing to the, to the greenhouse gas effect, uh, is, has the result of increasing the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. You can see that it is really increasing. So today we are already here. So it, was, it is a, a, a picture from uh, the, the climate change report from the IPCC two, uh, two or three years, um, uh, no, four years ago. Uh, and the problem of the greenhouse gases uh, is that they play the role of a, a, a layer that is avoiding or preventing the solar energy to radiate out of the uh, Earth's atmosphere, and it is going to send it back into the uh, atmosphere. And the consequence is that the temperature of the Earth is increasing. And uh, another consequence is that the sea level is also increasing. And I give you sh a short <coughs> video here, hopefully. That shows you the evolution of the temperatures. With time, and you can see that as soon as we have started to uh, develop our uh, industrial activities, the temperature is increasing. Okay. Um, okay. I'm not the only one that says this. I take here, and this is interesting to see. It's a Nexon study. So the, the one they claim that there is no uh, relationship between carbon dioxide and global warming. Okay. So all the, the, the climate change di uh, deniers. In fact, they knew. This is a, uh, uh, a study of Exxon made in 80, 1982 that shows that the concentration of the carbon dioxide is going to increase, and they were not so bad. Huh? They, are, they were targeting uh, around one, uh, 400 ppm, which is the situation uh, today. So they were quite good. And they were predicting here an increase of the average temperature. Okay, So it means that they knew. Okay. They have hidden the information, but they knew. Because they want to still sell the uh, oil, of course. Um, and there are some consequences. And there are, the, um, there are different ways of showing the consequences. So this is the humoristic way. OK, this poor bear is, is lost in the middle of uh, the ocean without ice anymore. Um, yeah, the people from Valais do, do complain that now the, win, the wine is produced in England. Okay, and this is a consequence. Uh, we can also see that the, 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 the wine collection is starting earlier and earlier. Um, we can also see that the, uh, the, the sea level is increasing. And there is a bad news for Trump because Mar -er Lago will be flooded for sure in uh, the coming years. And that's perhaps why he's trying to buy some uh, uh, golf courts in, in Scotland instead of Florida. Um, but there are also big con uh, consequences. So cities that are in just nearby the sea will have their aquifer that will become salted. So it means that they will not have any more potable water. And this concerns big cities like, like Shanghai, for example. Okay, so millions of people. Right? Um, and now we have a lot of alerts. So we have the alerts. So this year we had a lot of um, uh, flooding, uh, fires, heat waves, not only in Europe, huh? everywhere in the world. Okay, 
Um, and this was so important that uh, finally the, the politicians did listen to the climate scientists that were saying that uh, the temperature of the Earth is going to increase. There is a certain uncertainty because they are scientists, so they will never say, it increases. It is going to increase between this much and this much. And then the, the, the fact that it's not certain some, is exploited by some fake news people, okay? But nevertheless, so uh, here is the results of the collections of all the, of, of plenty of models that have been uh, uh, generated by a lot of scientists. So you can see that they do not reach exactly the same value. There is a range, okay? But what they have shown is that if we want to limit the temperature of the Earth uh, to 1.5 degrees C, which is the, the target that they have finally agreed on, it means that around 2017 or so, we will not be allowed to emit any more uh, a single atom of carbon dioxide from fossil resources. Okay, the net flux has to be zero. Okay, and this is a challenge for you. Okay, you are engineers, so you will, you will have the responsibility of finding ways of not uh, emitting any more carbon dioxide at the horizon of 2017. Okay, the whole career of you as an engineer uh, will be to some extent affected by this uh, agreement there. Okay, so 99 and uh, 95 out, out of the 96 countries of the world have said that they will ratify the uh, COP21 agreement, so the Paris Agreement, okay? The only one that has denied is, is Trump, but even in the US, uh, even if Trump is saying something, the people do something else, okay? And for example, California has decided to become 100% renewable by the horizon of 2050, okay? So it means that uh, we, we are not, uh, we, we still have hope. Okay, uh, and this is then introducing what we will do together in this course. Okay, in this course, what we, what we are going to do is that we are going to study what are the possible energy systems that can be used in order to mitigate or to reach the goals, realize the energy transition and mitigate the carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, looking at, at the, the holistic vision, and this is what. Uh, uh, Stefano is going to introduce now. So he will explain you first what is the energy system, what is inside an energy system, and uh, how can we design them afterwards better energy systems. Okay? So do you have questions? Who is not sure that the climate is going to change? <laughs> Okay, that's a good news. Nobody has the courage to say no. 